Hello everyone, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we're on episode number 131, and we're going to be going over the floating block module. If you're curious as to what the floating block module is, there's a demo link right here. I have it pulled up. You can see there's a block down here on the bottom left. As I scroll down, once I, when that block reaches the top, you'll notice it sticks at the top, and as I continue to scroll, it stays in that position, so it's always visible on the page. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can create your own floating block on your Drupal 7 site using the floating block module. But before we get started, as always, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to codecrowdy.com, sign up for the newsletter, and also check out the Code Karate Supporter Program, which is linked right over here on the left, and find out how you can help out Code Karate for as little as $2. You'll also notice if you scroll down on the page on the Code Karate website, the newsletter block sticks as well. And this is using the floating block module. So as you can see, it's a module that I use on the CodeKarate.com website. Today's sponsor is OS Training at OSTraining.com. Go ahead and check out OS Training and see all the different courses they have. They have Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, and just regular coding courses especially check out their responsive courses. They have re courses on responsive websites and responsive images and how you can use those in your websites. So go ahead and check them out and thank them for sponsoring Code Karate. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have the floating block module on the test site. It's already downloaded and installed as you can see here. I simply click on configure and it tells you a little bit of information of how to get your blocks to float. It uses CSS selectors, so you have to basically use the hashtag or number sign plus the ID of the block you want to float. You can also do some other things with positioning, and we'll go through the first two examples right now. I created a regular old block here called floating block and gave it some text. As you can see, it just has a title and some text in it. Nothing, nothing fancy. And if I come into the blocks interface, I just have it positioned at the bottom of the section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the home page and I'm going to figure out what this ID is for this block in order to make this work. So I'm going to open up your developer tools, Firebug, whatever you're using, and you need to find the ID of the block. In this case, this is ID block-block-1. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, copy it, and I'm going to come back into the floating block page. I'm going to go ahead and use the hashtag or number sign and then paste the block dash block dash one text in and click save. Now if I close out of this and start to scroll, you'll notice as I get down to the past where the floating block would normally be going up, it sticks. And as I scroll down, it's still stuck there at the top. You will notice it is getting a little bit overlapped by this admin menu. However, if you were logged out, it would be stuck right at the top of the page. But just to show how it can work, we're going to go ahead and make sure that it doesn't get overlapped by this admin menu. So what we're going to do is come back into configuration and go to your floating block configuration page. And we're going to look at this example right here, which basically tells me that if I want to add some additional padding at the top, I simply use the pipe character or the bar character and then use padding underscore top equals however many pixels I want it to be padded. In this case I will use 20. I'll click save and X out of this and now you'll notice that as I scroll down I can read the title text because it's stuck 20 pixels down from the top. That's really all there is to the floating block module. You can use it to float entire sections of your site or simple blocks and as you can see it's really useful. I use it on the CodeKarate.com site and you can probably use it on many sites of your own. So go ahead and take a look. Thanks again to OSTraining.com for supporting the Daily Dose of Drupal and thank you. We'll see you next time.